today we're going to make this cute little Easter basket. So today we're making this cute little Easter basket and it's a little bunny with a little tail. Now I did it in a basket stitch so it looks like a weaved basket but you don't have to do this. I just thought that you know it was cute if it would look like a weaved basket but it has cute little cute little uh, bunny face on it. We did some twisted single crochets for the bottom of the basket so it sits properly. So today's color is going to be this impeccable by Loops and Threads. This yellow is gorgeous and it is butterscotch. That's the, that's the flavor of the day for our Easter basket calls for a five millimeter. I'm still going to use my 4.5 for the ears and the muzzle and the nose but to actually make my basket I am going to use the five millimeter that the yarn calls for. So whatever yarn you're using use the hook it calls for and then when we get into building our ears and our muzzles and the bunny face, then we're going to go down in hook size because we're going to build it in amigurumi. Let's jump right into this. So we're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets using whatever hook your yarn calls for. We're going to slip stitch we're going to chain one. So throughout this project you're going to be putting an extra stitch in the chain space. When we get into our basket weave you're, it's going to be one half double because we're going to be chaining two. While we're in the single crochets you're going to put a single crochet into that chain 2 space and it will count as a stitch. So your first round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. So in this chain 1 space you need to put your second stitch and the third stitch. So two single crochets in each stitch all the way around. So your first stitch should have three in it. So I'm all the way back around and I'm going to slip stitch to the top of this chain and you should have a total of 12 stitches. Chain one. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. Put a single crochet in that chain one space and that counts as your first stitch. That's one single crochet so your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat. 
one single crochet and an increase will bring you up to 18 stitches. So you can slip stitch to the top of that first chain, chain one. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. So starting in your chain one space, that's number one. The next stitch is number two. And then the next stitch is the increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat. This will bring it up to 24 stitches. And again, slip stitch, chain one. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase, and this will bring you up to 30 stitches. So your first single crochet goes into that chain one space. That's three single crochets. And then this stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space, and repeat. So this is what you should have. If your work is rolling up right now, this should be flat. If your work is rolling up, your, your stitches are too tight or your hook is not the right size for the yarn that you're using. So slip stitch, chain one. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase, and this will bring you up to 36 stitches. Your first stitch goes into this chain one space. That's four single crochets, and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. Double slip stitch to the top and chain one. Your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. And again, the first stitch goes in this chain one space. And slip stitch to the top, chain one. So as you can see, we don't have a seam and that's because we're putting our first stitch into this chain one space. Your next round is gonna be six single crochets and an increase. First stitch goes into that chain one space.
slip stitch to the top of that chain and chain one. Our next round is going to be seven single crochets and an increase and this will bring you out to 54 stitches. Your first stitch goes into that chain one space. So I'll slip stitch, chain one. Your next increase row is going to be eight single crochets and an increase. Your first stitch goes into that chain one space. Slip stitch, chain one. And the chain one was a little loose. Your next round is going to be nine single crochets and an increase, and this will bring it up to 66, 66 <laughs> stitches. So put a, your first stitch into that chain one space. So, we're on our very last increase round. So this one's going to be 10 single crochets and an increase, and this will bring it up to 72 stitches. So your first stitch, as usual, is in that chain one space. So I'm all the way back around and this time I'm going to slip stitch and chain two. So this is what you should have. It should be fairly flat. I mean it curled up just a titch. But if yours is really cupping um, and you're using the hook that's associated with what your yarn calls for and it's still cupping, that's because you're a tight crocheter. So I would just go up in hook size again to kind of balance that problem out but this is what you should have a nice flat piece so I'm just gonna tuck this guy away and sew him in because you know at the end of the day you don't want this thing hanging around So for our next round, we're still doing, um, sorry, I don't want to chain two here. I want to chain two after the next round. So cha only chain one here. I lied. I don't know how to read, apparently. So I found this uh, picture on Pinterest of the Easter basket. But it wasn't um, a basket weave, it was just a regular stitch. Um, but I saw the picture and I thought, oh my god, how super cute, I want to do one. But I do my own designs, like I, I see a picture, I use the picture to make what I want, but I make it with my own design. So I stuck in this basket weave um, as part of the design. But if you don't want the basket weave, you can just do everything in half double crochets. Um, there's no increasing or decreasing so you can just do everything in half doubles if 
if you want once we get to the basket weave part if you don't want this type of a look here I'll show you where there's not a face so that's the look we get with the stitch that I'm gonna do now this is super duper easy don't let it intimidate you but if you don't want it then just do half double crochets doesn't really matter I just thought I would stick it in there um, just because it's cute but uh, the picture that I initially saw didn't have a basket weave I just thought it was cute so I thought I, I would design it. So I design it. I use my iPad. I put everything in my iPad. And sometimes when I'm reading it, doing videos, I'm on the wrong line. <laughs> so um, just chain one here. Um, our next round is going to be done in the back loops only because I need the front loops to put this on the bottom of the basket. So, and I kind of want to bring it from flat to sides. So we're going to do everything in the back loops, which are right here. So they're already quite visible. We're just doing one single crochet in each stitch around. So when you come back after this round, that's when you're going to slip stitch and chain two, because we're going to go into the half double. Now I don't try to get my hook in there. I know a lot of people probably struggle like I used to. I use this finger and I push it on. I just do it so fast nobody can see me doing it but I use that finger and I just kind of push that back loop on so it goes fairly quick. So one single crochet in each of these back loops all the way around. So I'm all the way back around and this is where I'm going to slip stitch and chain two. And I'm pretty certain about that this time. So you've got all these front loops that we're going to leave just sitting here for now but we're going to get into those later on and we're going to do a twisted single crochet on the bottom so your basket will sit up nice and stuff like that. So we've chained two because this next round is going to be one half double crochet in each stitch and then we're going to start the pattern stitch to make the basket weave. So um, one half double is going to go into the chain two space. Um, it's not really going to count as a stitch when we start the basket weave so it's just going to be the purpose of not leaving a seam because as you can see um, even though we know where our, st our stop and start point is there's no seam because we do that so one half double for this round one half double in each stitch starting with your chain two space and then after that it won't even matter as a stitch but we're still going to do it Actually, I don't even know, I don't think it's really that huge important either because we're going to start on posts after we come back. So one half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. So you should have 72 stitches. So I'm all the way back around. I'm going to slip stitch to the top of that first chain. I'm going to chain two. So you can continue, like I said, with your half doubles, or you can do the basket weave, which is super duper easy. So we're going to be working on these posts, not into the stitches. 
we're going to be working on these posts. And we're going to be doing front posts and back posts, alternating over four posts. So the first four posts right here, we're going to do front posts, double crochets. And then the next four posts, we're going to do back posts, double crochet. And then we're going to alternate all the way around. So if you're intimidated by this, don't be. I mean, the more you do it, the more you're going to love it. So put your half double in that chain two space just because it cuts down on the seam. But we're starting with these first four. So go down and pick up your first post. We're doing four front posts, double crochets. So pull through. Yarn over and complete the double crochet. So pick up the post, double crochet, yarn over, pick up the post, double crochet. So the front posts are easy, it's the back posts that nobody seems to like. So these next four posts, we're going to do back post double crochets. And that just simply means we're coming in through the back. So yarn over, come in through the back, and put this post on your hook at the back. Then you're going to yarn over. Now you do have to kind of pinch it and hold it and, you know, it can be weird. Finish the stitch. Yarn over, come through the back, put that post on your hook. I just pinch it right here, just to hold that. Pull through, finish the stitch as a double crochet. One more. So that's four back posts. And then we start again. Four front posts. And then we do back post again. So I'm all the way back around. You're only going to get three back posts done, but this will make it look like there's four there, so it'll still look even. So slip stitch if I can get in there to the top of that chain and chain two. So you're going to repeat the same thing. So with that, it looks like there's four there, but there's not. There's only three. Anyway. We're going to repeat that again. So on your front post, you're going to put front post. On your back post, you're going to put back post. So you're going to be able to identify it because this bar that runs across here, you'll know that's your back post with this bar. 
So just repeat the same thing, putting them on top of each other. And then when we come back, then we'll switch. And that's how we get the basket weave. So make sure you put a half double crochet in here. And again, it's not super duper important, but it does kind of help out when you only have three over here. So it'll make it look like four for your eye. Anyway, so these are my first four front posts that I did in the row before. And I'm just going to yarn over and do four front post double crochets on top of those. So this is what you should have. This is what it should look like. So I've already slip stitched in chain two. So for each go around, for each basket weave part, we're going to do two rows. So we just did our two rows stacking the front post ones onto the front post ones and the back posts onto the back posts. So this round is going to be the opposite of what we've done. So we did four front posts. We're going to do four back posts to start. And then front post, back post, front post. So it's going to be the opposite. And we're going to do two rows of the same thing. So again, half double into this chain two space. So our four front posts are now going to be four back posts. So you should have this bar across now. And then these four back posts are now going to be front posts. So you just kind of got to pop them up. So you're going to do this all the way around. You're going to be doing the opposite of what you did in the last two rows. So when you come back around, you're going to have three front posts before you slip stitch and chain. And then you're going to go around a second time doing what we did before. You're going to stack what we just did. So when you go around again, it's going to be starting with four back posts and so on and so forth. So I will meet you back here after your next two rows is done. So I don't think there's much more I can really explain on how to do this. So my two rows is done. I'm going to slip stitch, chain two, put a half double crochet in there. So that's what it should look like. So now it's starting to look like a basket weave. So we're doing, we're going to do this couple more times. So your next two rows will be the opposite of what we just did. So we back, we're going, so down here we started with front post, back post, front post. Up here we did back post, front post. So now again, we're going to do front post. We're going to do the opposite for two rows.
So I'm back around with my last two rows done. So this is what I have. So I'm only going to do this one more time. Um, and then my basket's going to be finished as far as height. But like I said, if whatever you want. So of course my next two rows now are, are going to be uh, the back, starting with back post, because I've got front post exposed, so I'm going to do back post, front post, back post, front post, for the next two rows. So, if that is not as big, like if you want yours to be bigger than what I'm doing, then um, just keep going. Now that you know what we're doing, um, you can just keep going. So, But I think two more rows for me, and then I'll meet you back here. When you're done your final row, I just want you to chain one, not two. So I will meet you back here when we are complete. So I am back. I've got my two rows done. So this is going to be my basket. Just like that. Well, I, we'll put the bottom on. It'll look better. But um, So we got to do the top rim. Um, but that's your basket weave basket. So the top rim we do to make it look like this. Kind of just, you know brings the basket in a bit so it does look kind of round like that and it just looks a lot better than leaving it all squiggly wiggly so I'm going to chain I'm going to slip stitch and chain one <clears throat> don't worry about the one single crochet in that same stitch every single post you see it's gonna get a front post single crochet so ignore that one we're gonna pop across and grab the first so this is my set of four back posts so I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna put a single crochet on it and grab the next post single crochet and that's all we're going to do. Single crochet. So my four front posts from the row below. Single crochet. Single crochet. So when we do that, it puts this nice thick border along the top. So that's what we're going to continue to do all the way around. So I am all the way back around. So I'm going to go into this stitch and slip stitch and fasten off. Just need a weaving tail and then maybe a little bit of a sewing tail to kind of make this look not so bad. So you can see a little bit of a jog from where you started and stopped. So I'm just going to scooch through to the other side. I'm going to grab a back loop and a back loop and I'm just going to pop across. I'm just trying to make this look a little bit more even. Go back down through the front. I 
Do the same thing with those two front loops. Just to make it look a little bit better. And then you can pop down through here and do your weaving. So that's our basket. So I'm going to change hooks here. I know I said I wasn't changing hooks until the bunny face, but I lied. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, you don't have to, but I am going to. You can still use your 5. I'm just going to change my 4.5 just because it is a little bit of a smaller hook. And I don't want this bottom to be too overly big. So I'm going to make a slip knot, put that on my hook. So you should be right here where you fastened off. Should be where your jog is here for your front loops. So just go into one of those front loops and reattach using whatever you want. Single crochet, slip stitch, doesn't matter. Because we're putting another stitch in there anyway. So in that same front loop, put in another stitch and kind of pull up on the stitch. This first one's going to be tight and I want you to spin it, yarn over and pull through. This is what's called a twisted single crochet. So you're going to go into your next front loop. This, make sure this is your loose loop, the one on your hook. So go into your next front loop, pull up a loop and pull up twist it, yarn over, and finish the stitch. You're going to do this in every single front loop. So if you don't pull up on this, they're going to be super duper tight and you're going to struggle. So make sure this one's always loose. So ultimately, what this bottom is going to do is keep it sitting up straight. So no matter how many eggs or how many candies or whatever your little fella does during either an egg hunt or this is just a gift basket or whatever you're using it for, your this will help your basket sit properly as well as being super duper cute of course. So I'm just coming around to the end. So, I'm just going to go back into that same loop I started in to do my slip stitch and fasten off. I tie these two together just to pull that together in a tight double knot. So that's the bottom of mine. So no matter what's in it, this will always sit like it's supposed to sit. So um, my handle, when I made my handle, uh, I wanted it to be nice and tight and stiff. So for this guy, I went down, I used my 4.5, but as you can see, it's still kind of floppy. So I think I'm going to go down to a 3.75, or even a 4, maybe I'll just do a 4. I'm going to go down to my 4 millimeter, see if I can't make this nice and thick so it stands up a lot better. And I'm going to yarn under instead of over which always makes a big difference. It's a boxier stitch and I just think it makes a huge difference. So for the handle, I chained 61. My handle turned out to be 14 inches long. Uh, so if you want a, um, 
a longer handle, then don't go down. Don't drop down to a 4. Just uh, stick with your 5 or stick with your 4.5. So that is my chain 61. And I'm going to do 60 single crochets back up. But I'm going to yarn under and not over. So when I go in, instead of grabbing it like this, I'm going to grab it like this and pull through. Um, when I do that, personally, it is a way tighter stitch for me. It certainly is a boxier stitch for everybody, but for me, it helps me keep my stitches nice and tight. And I need this handle to be stiff, so I'm yarning under. So I'm all the way back down. It's pretty tight because it was curling. But um, PDF users, there is no hook change on your PDF for the handle, by the way. You can choose whatever you make the, your handle with. I did not put a hook change um, on the PDF. And for anybody that know, doesn't know what I'm talking about right now, um, I offer PDFs for all my videos. Um, you just have to become a member of my channel um, by hitting that join button. And you can have access to all my PDFs for every video that I'm doing. So I just want you to chain one and turn here. For the next three rows, we're just going to put one single crochet in each of these stitches. And again, I am going to yarn under for every stitch, trying to keep it nice and tight. So I am done my second row. I'm just going to fasten off. You need a um, sewing tail because we're going to fold this in half and we're going to whip stitch all the way back down. If you want to stick a pipe cleaner or something in here, then I'm sure that'll be fine. It might be actually kind of neat to do that. I'm not sure that would make a huge difference, but... So, maybe just at the top of the handle. Let's see what happens when we do that. I've never done that before, it was just an idea. So I'm all the way to the end. I'm going to tie my straggler together with my sewing piece. So it didn't really make a big difference putting that <coughs> pipe cleaner in there. I mean it sort of did, but it didn't. But this actually stands up better than my other <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. This actually stands up better than my other one, so it still flops, but so that's our little basket. So if you wanted to stop there then
thanks for joining me. Um, some people would just want the basket, I suppose. Uh, so next we're going to um, start doing the bunny stuff. So um, get your colors if you're doing a different color. I'm just going to do yellow. And uh, I'll meet you right back here. So I am using my 4.5 for the bunny face. So we're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. This is built in amigurumi, so you will need a stitch marker. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch, so because it's amigurumi, there's no slip stitching, there's no chaining. You just go directly into your next stitch and start working. After your first stitch, that's where the marker goes, then stitch number two can go into that same space, and two single crochets in each space around will give you 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase, and this will bring you up to 18 stitches. That's one single crochet with your marker, and then the next stitch gets the increase, which is two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So you should have 18 stitches for the next two rows. I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. So that's my two rows. So this is what you should have. And you have to make another one. So I'm going to put the pattern on the screen. And I will meet you right back here with our second piece. So I got to my two pieces, so you got to make sure the basket is folded exactly in half. So these get stuffed, they get sewn on down here just so we have some room for the eyes. So, this is my stuffed, probably not the same, but that's my muzzle. 
So now we have to do the little tiny pink nose that kind of, and I sewed these together. You probably saw in my uh, time lapse. Um, so now we just got to do the little pink nose. So I've decided to change hooks again, and I am using this 3.75 millimeter F5 for this next part, and pink. So whatever color nose you want, if you want a brown nose, then get your brown. I'm going to use pink again. That's what I used on my last one. So I started with a chain five. I made two of these and sewed them together because I made 15 noses and I didn't like either one of them made amigurumi. So I decided to just make them flat and then sew the two pieces together. So chain five. This is a four weight yarn. So this nose is nice and tight. This is um, just a regular four weight I think it's just a red heart. It's pink. I don't know. It's kind of scrap yarn. Um, four single crochets back up. Chain one. Turn your work. And you're going to do four single crochets again. Fat fingers don't like the small pieces. Chain one, chain your work. So you should have four stitches, obviously. And we're going to decrease the first two and the last two. So decrease those and then we're going to decrease these so you'll see it written as SC two tog two times chain one turn your work and then two stitches here are going to just going to get an SC two tog which is a decrease and you can fasten off and then you're going to make your second one There we go. So the first thing we do is tuck away these guys. Then these obviously get matched up. The point at the top. So one of these is going to be for sewing. <coughs> so one of these is going to be for sewing around the triangle, and the other one is probably just going to be used for sewing to the bunny. Or whatever you want to do. Either way, these two triangles get sewn together. So the triangle goes down. Or whatever you want. So it kind of sits up near the top. Oh, my fingers are in the way. Does that help? <laughs> anyway. I know my fingers are in the way. So it kind of sits on the top and you kind of got to curve it over.
So the last stitch I do, I go right into the top and I pull it so it curves under. Does that make sense? I'm going to pop this out. <laughs> My muzzle. I don't think I put enough stuffing in this because they keep collapsing a little bit. So that's your cute little nose. It actually looks better on this one than it does the purple one. So, of course, I did googly eyes. Um, you can do whatever eyes you want. I do have these ones. I think they're too small, though. But you can do whatever eyes you want. I mean, if you want to crochet eyes on. I just thought the googly eyes would be fun for the kids. But... Well, those aren't horrible. Oh my gosh, those are so cute. Those are adorable. I'm going to just... So these are to sew. I'm just going to glue these little guys on. I love these eyes. And when you glue them, oh my god, do they ever stick well. So I'm going to glue those on. So I need to put something... Oh my gosh, those are so cute. I absolutely love them. And yeah, they're two different colors too. I love the fact that they're two different colors. They're so cute. Didn't even do matching. Oh, they're so adorable. So these ears, they start with a magic ring of six single crochets. I'm using my 4.5. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. So this is also done in amigurumi. So after your first stitch, that's where the marker goes. And then stitch number two can go into that same space. And each space around gets two for a total of 12 stitches when you're done. Your next round is going to be one single crochets in each stitch. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. That's your one single crochet with your marker. And then the next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. Your next round is going to be one single crochet in each stitch. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in an increase. This will bring you up to 24 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. Next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. 
this will bring it up to 30 stitches. So I should have 30 stitches. For the next seven rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 30 stitches. So that's my seven rows. So we're going to start decreasing now. We're going to do a three single crochet decrease. That's three single crochets and then my decrease is going to be invisible. So front loops only. But you can do any sort of decrease that you want. Next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. For the next three rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So this doesn't get stuffed, by the way. We're not stuffing this at all. So. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and a decrease. And your last round, of course, is going to be one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches and then we can fasten off. This is my 12th stitch, so I'm going to fasten off in the next stitch, slip stitch, and fasten off with a little bit of a sewing tail. It doesn't take much to sew it on. So that's your little ear. So go ahead and make your second ear, and I will meet you right back here. So I am back. I've got both my ears done and I've just whip stitched the top of them closed. And I'm going to use this for a tail, but for the back of my other one, I just made a pom pom with the yarn that I used. But this one, I'm going to do something a little bit more special because it is for my trin trin. She's going to be here at my house for Easter, so we're going to be doing an egg hunt and everything else. So anyway, get your little Easter basket and 
you can just decide you can decide where you want your ears I love the two different colored eyes I've got going on. <laughs> anyway, you can decide where you want to sew on your ears. This thing, if you're use, if you have a pom pom, you want to use too. This thing has a little thing like that. So I'm just gonna take a piece of yarn. <laughs> I think it's super fun. Super fun. I think my trend trend will like it. So I've got to do the bow. This is a this is such an Eastery looking yarn. That's what I'm gonna use for the bow. And oh this is such a stiff label. So it's by Loops and Threads. It's the Flex yarn. And this is called Spring Green. So that's what I'm going to use for the bow because it's perfect. And I've got this greenish color in my, well, all the different colors in my tail, my bunny tail. That calls for a five millimeter. So I'm going to use my four just so it's nice and tight. So we're going to start with, isn't this pretty? Look at the flex in it. A little, I love it. It's so springy. We're going to start with a chain six and five single crochets. That is my chain six. So I'm going to do five single crochets back up. Chain one, turn your work. For the next three rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these five stitches. So we're going to start to decrease. Well, not start to decrease. We're going to decrease. There's not much to decrease, but these first two stitches, you're going to see this written as SC2TOG. So we're going to decrease these first two stitches. And then we're going to do one single crochet. So the guy in the middle, and then we're going to single crochet the last two together. So decrease the last two. This leaves you three stitches. Sometimes this can be difficult to work with. Chain one, turn your work. For the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these three stitches. So now we're going to increase. This first stitch gets two single crochets in the same space. Then you're going to do one single crochet. And then this last stitch gets two single crochets in the same space. Chain one, turn your work. For the next eight rows, I want you to put one single crochet in each of these five stitches.
So now we start decreasing again. We're going to decrease the first two. We're going to do one single crochet, so the guy in the middle, and decrease the last two. Chain one, turn your work. For the next two rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these three stitches. So now we're going to increase. So this first stitch gets two single crochets. Then you're going to do one single crochet. And then the last stitch it's going to get two single crochets. So chain one, turn your work. For the next um, four rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these five stitches. You can fasten off. You're going to need a sewing tail. So this gets this big part where we did eight rows. You can fold that in half. It should match up these two sides. So that's your bow, but we're not going to sew it all together. We're just going to sew these two ends. So this guy can get tucked away. So I'm not sewing this together, I'm just weaving a little bit. Now if you don't want to crochet the middle, you can just do this around the center. If you have enough sewing cord, you can just do that. Me, I'm going to crochet the middle part. So we're going to chain three and do two single crochets. Chain one, turn your work, and I'm going to do two single crochets for six rows. Or, however, I don't know how you crochet tight or loose, but however long it takes to make a thing long enough to go around the inside of your bow. And it has to be tight. So that's my six rows. Now it has to be tight. It has to pull it like that. So fasten off. So easy peasy. And then this gets wrapped. So do you see how it doesn't come close to even matching, like near each other? That's how you know it's going to be nice and tight. Because it has to squeeze your bow together. Just like that. So save some of this tail to sew with. So that's your little bow.
And then I just put it on one of the ears. But you can put it anywhere you want. And then my little bow on my ear. There we go. All done. I get my little fluffy tail in there. There. <laughs> Looks angry on it. I do that. So, thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.